Atu 12, The Hanged Man The Hebrew letter Mem, equivalent to the Roman English letter M. The Hebrew letter Aleph, The Fool Atu. And the Hebrew letter Shin, Roman English phoneme Sh, are called in Hakabbalah the three mother letters because they occur at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the Hebrew alphabet. Because of their positions in the alphabet as the three mothers, these three letters were each assigned an elemental attribute, while the rest of the letters in the alphabet were either planetary or zodiacal. Thus, Mem was the mother of the water element. As with the fool Atu, and, as we shall soon see, the Atu of the letter Shin, the Golden Dawn Tarot deck's depiction of the character for the card for the hanged man focuses primarily on the trait of his title and does little or nothing to suggest the elemental or alphabetical traits. We see a man with his hands bound behind him, tied in a T-shaped tree by his right ankle with a halo. Much has been speculated about the posture of this character as his left leg crosses at the knee behind his right leg. However, as we see in Alistair Crowley's depiction of the hanged man at two, the left leg is bound while the right is crossed in front, entirely opposite of the Golden Dawn depiction. Thus, there is less meaning implied by the posture of the legs in the Golden Dawn deck than implication of the water element in Crowley's depiction. We see the hanged man of Crowley's deck is hung from an inverse onchiroglyph, symbolizing life, is pierced with nails through his right foot and both hands, and is bald and naked. Below him is a twisting serpent, and behind him a blue square of seventeen rows and columns. At 2.13 death. The significance of the Hebrew letter Nun is not the hieroglyphic image of a fish that defines it, but the concept of living or moving that describes the letter's trait. This contradicts the title of the Tarot card, or Atu, associated with this letter. In the Golden Dawn's depiction of the meaning of the letter Nun, as not life, but the opposite of life, death itself, shows a skeleton in black armor astride a pale horse. Death holds a black flag on which is a white rose signifying a mystery. In the distance are two towers and a sunset. Beneath the horse's hooves lies the dead king, his crown being trampled. A man in the robes of the Christian Pope prays to death on behalf of a woman and child. In Aleister Crowley's depiction of the same concept, a black skeleton wearing an Egyptian crown weaves with a scythe on a long loom a double helix spiral. Above an eagle, below a scorpion, signifying the zodiac sign attributed to this etu. Behind the skeleton is a snake, and beneath it a fish, signifying the letter Nun. Atu 14, Serenity. The Hebrew letter Samak symbolized a prop or flail. The Egyptian hieroglyph for this is a forearm and hand holding a crop or short whip. The relative zodiac sign was Sagittarius, the archer. In the Golden Dawn's depiction of the Temperance Atu, we find the Angel of Revelations depicted again, here pouring water upward from one cup into another, symbolizing the alchemical elixir of immortality. The angel stands with one foot on the shore and one in the sea, as described in the Book of Revelations, and behind on the horizon is a crown halo above a narrow winding pass between twin mountain peaks. In Aleister Crowley's depiction of the Art Atu, a green-robed, two-faced woman mixes water poured from a cup 
using a wand made of fire, into a large golden bowl, on either side of which are an albino lion and a red eagle, symbolizing the phoenix. At 215, the devil. The original meaning of the Hebrew letter Ayin was an eye, and the Egyptian hieroglyphic of the eye corresponds to the Hebrew letter Ayin. Neither of these in itself is significant of the devil concept, which originated at the same time as the earliest civilizations and records of history. The devil Atu is also associated with the fish goat zodiac sign of Capricorn. Only by combining all these concepts in a negative light can we begin to see the origins of the devil Atu's symbolic imagery. In the Golden Dawn Devil card, we see the depiction, originally by Eliphas Levy, of Baphomet as goat-headed and hooved, but with the torso of a man, here shown with bat's wings. The inverse pentagram is his crown, and he holds up the sign of Vulcan and downward a lit torch. To his cubic throne are chained the demonized versions of Adam and Eve, with tails symbolizing the trees of life and knowledge. In Aleister Crowley's rendition of the Devil Atu, we see the scapegoat of Mendes also depicted, with long horns resembling those of Egyptian mat, ware of the scales over heaven or hell, floating in front of an erect phallus whose two testicles show the genomic separation into four males and four females. Atu 16, the lightning struck tower. Although it occurs third in the current Hebrew alphabet, originally the letter Gimel was the 17th letter in the hieroglyphic syllabary, and originally signified a camel. Since no Egyptian hieroglyphic is known that specifically signifies the camel, the closest approximation to one shape is believed to be this humped hill shape. The 16th Golden Dawn Atu tarot deck card depicts a tower atop a hill. The tower is being struck by lightning, symbolizing the power of war, Mars being the planet associated with this Atu. The tower itself symbolizes the power of authority, the crown on top overturned by the lightning bolt. From the tower's three flaming windows fall a king and a pope. The 16th Atu of Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck depicts essentially the same scene, though stylized highly abstract. A castle tower falls beneath a river of flame emanating from an eye in the sky. The letter Ayin, recall, signifies an eye and occurs 17th in the current Hebrew alphabet. A dove, a haloed serpent, and a mouth breathing fire surround the central theme as additional symbolic images. Atu 17, the star. The Hebrew letter Tzadi, symbolizing the phoneme of soft C, was meant to symbolize a fishhook. The Egyptian hieroglyph of the fishhook was a two-legged upside-down ankh, that is, a five-pointed figure with a loop for one point. This Atu aligned with the zodiac sign Aquarius, significant also of the water element. The star Atu of the Golden Dawn Tarot deck shows seven smaller eight-point stars around a single larger one. Below these sits a bird in a tree in the distance behind a blonde woman pouring water from two small jars, one onto water and one onto land. She kneels with one foot on the surface of the pond. Due to a peculiar quote from an Egyptian stele transposed by Aleister Crowley, he made much fuss in arranging his system of tarot trumps so as to render the star Atu 
subjective epistemologically, yet seems to have forgotten the entirety of the modern Hebrew alphabet, is no more so set in stone than his juxtaposition of Tzadi for Cheth. The image is of a bathing blue woman pouring two cups. Beyond the horizon is a planet with a seven-point pole below a star with seven points. Add to 18, the moon. The Hebrew letter Kof, Romanized English letter Q, was meant to depict the back of a head or a face in profile. The corresponding Egyptian hieroglyph shows exactly this, the face of a male head in profile. It corresponds to the zodiac sign Pisces, which is usually symbolized by twin fish, and the Atu is called the moon. The connection between all these symbols is simple, relating to monthly tide cycles affected on Earth's oceans by our moon. In the Golden Dawn Tarot deck depiction of the Atu of the moon, we see a quarter moon surrounding the profile of a face, symbolizing a lunar over solar eclipse. A long, narrow, winding path leads towards mountains on the horizon between two towers, each with one window, and ends in a beach in the foreground. A lobster crawls out of the ocean onto the path, and on either side of the shore sit two jackals braying at the lunar event. In Alistair Crowley's version of the moon at whose depiction, we see two lighthouses, each girded by an Anubis, holding an Ankh. At their feet is a shoreline below which is a scarab beetle, rolling up a solar disk surrounded by blue and red waves. Between the towers in the sky is the shape of a triple-looped torus, in the middle of which are red and blue ribbons, raining down light to the submerged solar disk. Atu 19, the sun. By subtracting part of the linear form of the letter Kof, Hebrew Q, we turn the symbol it represents, the back of the head, around to the front to yield the letter Resh, Hebrew R, and the Egyptian hieroglyph meaning a head seen facing front. The planetary aspect from the symbols of astronomy, the sun, eclipses any other meaning in the title of the card. In the Golden Dawn depiction of the Tarot Trump for this Egyptian hieroglyph, we see the sun's face head-on, surrounded by rays and waves of light, above flourishing sunflowers growing on a brick wall. A young child wearing a crown of flowers and holding a red banner sits on the back of a pale gray horse. Aleister Crowley's depiction of the Tarot Trump for the hieroglyph that became the Hebrew letter Resh is equally overshadowed by solar symbolism, and rather than a face, shows two cherubim before a small, crowned, grassy hill below a solar disk and surrounded by the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac.